Congratulations. I'm hungry for some legal analysis, John. Me too. All right. So Shannon Bream is here, Carrier Bond and Leo Terrell. Leo, we haven't heard from you yet. You've been listening to this whole thing. What do you make of it? Did the, uh, did the defense make its case and try to prosecute? It's an interesting turn of events here. Uh, uh John and Sandra and Carrie and Shannon, absolutely. That, that, that the last uh, defense uh, lawyer did a fantastic summation to to capsulize everything that has been pre been presented. It's not just the appearance; it's the actual conflict and and the the magnitude of the I'm going to call it the church speech, which was a extrajudicial statement outside the courtroom that prejudiced Donald Trump and the other 18 defendants. All Fox viewers, you want to do a quick law school class, go to U.S. versus Burger. That, that was unethical. But the financial <laughs> impropriety, if there was no conflict of interest, the defense is basically stating, why did they lie about the relationship, Wade and Willis, regarding the start date? By that lie starts the domino effect of all the subsequent misrepresentation. And I'll say this again as a lawyer for 30 years. You never, 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 never lie to the court. And I think there's been mm. overwhelming evidence for the nation to see that Fannie Willis and Nathan Wade uh, are basically have lied to the court. One last point. I will submit to you that this judge is under tremendous local, state, and national pressure to do the right thing. And if he does the right thing, he's going to face some severe ramifications, in my opinion, unfortunately. All right, Carrie, yeah. what struck you? I agree with Leo. I was also struck by them pointing out the inappropriateness of that speech where the district attorney said, God is on my side. For a mm. DA to say that about a case that she is overseeing before it's even reached a jury, is remarkably inappropriate and I think should be referred to the, um, the local bar and it seems to be a violation of the professional rules of responsibility. You know, another thing that struck me was the lawyer for uh, the former Republican Party chair of Georgia. I thought he, made a, he did an excellent job laying out and dismantling piece by piece the problems in the testimony that both Willis and Wade have presented. And he said this, I've been a federal prosecutor for many years. I've been a lawyer for many years. As I'm participating in this case, Prosecutors don't act like this. Lawyers don't act yeah. like this. This is systemic misconduct, and they need to go. Uh, Shannon, you and I were talking about this uh, just before the uh, court wrapped up there. Uh, this whole case would seem to hinge on a single text message, and that was the text message when Ashton Merchant said, did this start before he was hired? Terrence Bradley responds, absolutely. But then I, I said to you, well, would it only be conf would, yeah. would it only be inappropriate and conflict of interest if this relationship started before? And Fonny Wallace is there in court before he was hired, or if they had a relationship after that, would that be inappropriate as well? Well, and that's the whole question: is that this money was it intended to flow in a way that was going to benefit her? But now it's gotten so much more expansive beyond that question. And you heard a couple of the attorneys saying there: this isn't a perjury trial. This judge doesn't have to decide if somebody lied under oath mm -hmm. or not. But as a fact finder in this proceeding, he does have a chance to make assessments about credibility. And there have been a lot of people on the stand who have told differing stories to different people at different times. All of that he can assess. Mm. And remember, if uh, D.A. Willis is disqualified, that means her entire team, her entire office would be blocked from prosecuting and moving this forward. There's a state agency that would then come in and see whether this is assigned to a different D.A. somewhere else in the state. Obviously, that would be a massive delay. It could change the very structure of the court, the charges, the defendants, all of it. Um, but there is a chance this judge says, hey, you haven't come to me. There was a lot of talk about who has the burden of proof. You haven't proven to me beyond a shadow of a doubt or beyond a question of credibility, whatever the burden is here, that there was actually something going on here that was nefarious and unethical. Only Scott McAfee can make that decision. And you've heard him. He's been very neutral. He's been very blunt. You heard one of the attorneys there saying, can I have time for rebuttal to come back at the end? He's like, nope. Uh, so he's trying to play by the rules and say, like, we're going to wrap it up today. Yeah. Um, Leo, perhaps this will be the final thought as uh, Fonnie Willis, as you can see on the screen there, has entered the room, taken her seat, and the judge said they'd be returning at 240. Quick thought before we get back in here. No question. When the fact that she's in the courtroom, Sandra, John, Shannon, <laughs> Kelly, she's going down with the ship. She's going to go. She's not going to drop out. She's going to go down to the go down with the ship and force the judge to make a ruling that her presence there is a sign of defiance. You know, as, as, as we just wait for court to start back up again, uh, maybe we can put this up. This was called for number one uh, of the text messages uh, between Terrence Bradley and Ashley Merchant. 
Terrence Bradley says, doesn't surprise me. They took so many trips together. Ashley Merchant writes back. Uh, he says, Florida, Texas. Merchant says, in Napa, Bradley, California. Merchant, yep, Bradley, when she moved her daughter there. Merchant says, I can't believe they were so carefree. And then says, I am trying to anticipate her response when I blow this up. Sandra, we're about to find out. <laughs> we are indeed. Carrie, you want to get a final thought in here? It'll be very interesting to see how this plays out. I did think that uh, the discussion around the, um, the former divorce lawyer and his text messages and why they couldn't get a statement locked down from him. The judge was making the point, like, this would be better if you had a, a, a lockdown statement versus these text messages. And then the defense said, yeah, but these are text messages to the defense lawyer, and we have them right here. So what's the difference? But certainly something the judge is considering as he's taking a look at all that's been presented to him today. Right. You know, the one thing that the judge said, uh, Shannon, that, oh, and the judge is coming back in. So real quick, one thing the judge said that really caught my, my ear was what he was talking about that text message where Bradley said, absolutely, the relationship started before he was hired. He said, well, what do you have to prove that Bradley actually was telling the truth in that text? Mm -hmm. Well, and then they said, well, listen, he went on from there totally unprompted. And gave all right. kinds of details about this office, not that, that yeah. office, this time, not that time. So mm. that was unprompted. That followed on his uh, statement mm. that seemed pretty un unequivocal, the word absolutely. All right, Shannon, back into the courtroom. The judge is now speaking. Let's listen. What